Now, I'm going to be honest to you. It's 5.55 a.m. in the morning as I am talking to you here. I am going crazy because I'm pissed off, really pissed off, and I can't fall asleep. And so that means that when I inevitably wake up at around 10 a.m. to make the video for 12 p.m. later today, I am going to oversleep. And you know what that means? It means I'm going to be late, and the Canucks have a game later today. So I cannot be late in making whatever Canucks-related video we'll have on the chopping block. So instead, I'm taking my... Just absolutely not in a peaceful state of mind right now. Hopping onto the microphone, it's 5.56 a.m. And I want to give you my thoughts on Bo Horvat. I'm going to go out there, pre-record, pre-upload this video at 12 p.m. So that by the time I am deep into my REM sleep stage and hopefully not waking up until 2 p.m. later in the day, this video will be uploaded automatically. So let's go over to Bo Horvat, talk about all the crap that the Vancouver Canucks have been dealing with when it comes to to him right now. By the way, you could kind of tell I'm sort of unfiltered right now because there's nothing really holding me back from going over my thoughts on whatever it is that you decide to get me to talk about at this stage because I haven't slept in almost 24 hours. But either way, talking about the Vancouver Canucks right here, they sucked in the last game they had played. Winnipeg Jets 5-1 loss, 4-1 loss? I don't really remember the score. Short-term memory, right? In and out, as they say. But Bo Horvat scored a goal with five minutes to go, and we had joked around in the post-game video saying that the goal that he had scored, it was kind of like the Chris Paul hits a huge three to cut the lead down to 42 memes that had been tossed around earlier in the year. Because Bo Horvat pretty much went out there and had another stat-padding game. Even though he comes away with a loss for his team, he gets a goal, and that's fine because, hey, he's now at 22 goals in the season in 30 games played on pace for 60 total goals. He's only got nine assists, but he's got a heck of a lot of goals, which is why he is great. And in fact, when you talk about the contract, the fact that he's making five and a half million dollars till the end of this season, he's going to the UFA market should he not resign in Vancouver. And you've got all the stuff going on about the Canucks and their trade price for Bo, etc., etc. Let's talk about the idea as to what exactly it is Horvat provides for this team, his overall outlook, I guess you could say, to the season, or how we can perceive his outlook to be, and what this might spell for the Vancouver Canucks. And what I wanted to open this idea up with with you was this clip of Satir Shah on Canucks Central. This was clipped by Wiley Canuck. They posted it on the Twitter. It was the post game, I believe, or maybe it was the show from the day after. I'm not really too sure, but the clip will be linked in the description if you want to go ahead and watch it. Satir Shah pretty much goes out there and layeth the smack down on not necessarily Bo Horvat himself, but the fans in the Vancouver fan base, the guys that are going out there on Twitter replying to everybody saying, hey, we can't trade Horvat. Why would we trade Horvat? He is our captain. If we trade our captain, then we're doomed. We got to keep this guy because Bo is super important. Bo is our leader. Bo is our cap. We would be making our team worse and we'd be losing out on potential long term gains if we keep Horvat around. And what Reddit user, what's their name, Skateboard123 did, was they pretty much transcribed what it was that Satir Shah said about Bo Horvat and posted it onto the subreddit. That's the captain of your hockey team. You're scoring goals, but are you doing what it takes to win hockey games? You're not. I don't care that you have 22 goals. You're not doing the things it takes to win games. And in the clip, Satir Shah says, hey, maybe a change of scenery would actually ignite those types of tendencies. Maybe if he gets traded to another team, maybe then he'll go out there and actually do the things that he needs to do as a captain to win hockey games. But as of right now, he's not. In Vancouver, he's not. Even if he scores a goal, this was a game against Winnipeg where there were several goals that were partially his fault, if not entirely his fault, with line changes, with defensive decisions, etc., etc. Bo isn't really having that great of a year when you watch him play. He's getting a lot of tipping goals. He's getting a lot of one-timer goals. He's getting a lot of goals, just in general. Goals everywhere for Bo, but does that necessarily mean that he is having a season where he is performing well? Satir Shaw would go out there and say, nah. In fact, here are some of the comments on the Canucks subreddit. Yeah, by the way, I'm so jaded. It's been so long since I've slept, and my mind is kind of going sicko mode right now that I just want to go out there and read 
not really give you my own arguments, just kind of go out there and regurgitate what it is that other people are saying about this. This was the main comment on the Reddit post by Zorbane. Bieksa brought this idea up during the Caps and the Leafs intermission. Everyone was pouring praise on Ovechkin, and Bieksa pointed out how Ovi doesn't really play defense and compared him to Stamkos, whom he says has learned you need to play at both ends of the ice. Mabs went out there and said, yeah, I remember the gif of Ovechkin's back check, where it's just him drifting into the defensive zone, and BX is absolutely right. Like Stamkos and Crosby play both ends of the ice. Hell, watch Game 5 from the 2011 third round against the San Jose Sharks, and you see Daniel catch up to Marlowe in our end and wipe him out of the play. Now, I get it. You could say, well, I mean, Ovechkin is still one of the best goal scorers of all time. Like... What are you going out there and saying there, Juice? Which is totally fair. He's great. Very good at goal scoring. But it is a very contentious point to argue that, hey, Ovechkin, not the best defensively. I don't think that's too unfair to say. In fact, here's another comment on the subreddit from Paperweight Coaster. Wasn't this, the Satir Shaw take about Bo Horvat, the same take that Yannick Hansen had? He was critical of Bo, basically saying how he's doing great individually, but his nine assists show he's not making the team or his line mates better. The eye test kind of confirms this. And I guess you could say this opens up an entirely new discussion as to whether or not Bo Horvat is a quote-unquote good playmaker in general. I mean, his career high in assists was 34 in 82 games played in 2018-19. This season, he's on pace for 25. Now, 25 is not terrible, but okay, it's kind of terrible. Not gonna lie, especially for the captain of a hockey team who is a good enough second-line center. But for Bo, he's mostly just been the trigger man this season. He's not really taking too many long shots. He's taking shots from medium danger areas, near the hash marks, rebounds, bang-ins, and of course the tip-ins. He's getting a lot of goals because he is just the last guy who ends up touching the puck on a play. He's not really the guy throwing it out in front for a beautiful cross-crease pass as often as he maybe had been in the past. Here's another comment that I wanted to read from the subreddit. Inappropriate... What is that? Inappropriate area. That's what it is. Yeah. See? I'm jaded. I can't really read names properly. Nothing but facts. As soon as Horvat signs a deal, he's not putting in the same effort as you're watching right now consistently. The guy's game from playoff bow to what we've seen every game in the regular season the last couple of seasons is so far apart, it's scary. He's not physical, despite having the frame for it. He's not hard to play against, and he's not good defensively. Can't have your captain, and the guy who's supposed to set your tone consistently, be the guy that just floats and turns up when he feels like it. And I know there's a reputation that Bo has in this city that he is a workhorse, he can absolutely go, and that's very much true. He can be just absolutely pouncing on the puck, leading a rush by himself, he can backtrack if he wants to, and we know he's capable of that. It's just, there are so many examples in the past few weeks worth of play where Bo just doesn't do that. Take a look at the line change on the Cal Connor goal, 1-0 against Winnipeg the other night. Just an example of poor decision-making, poor line-changing ability, and there's the work ethic aspect that is involved in that too. And, I mean, there's an argument going on in this Reddit thread, specifically after this comment was made, questioning the Bo Horvat work ethic, and people are going out there and giving a whole bunch of other examples, the long shot from the point, Bo standing there covering nobody, etc., etc. And then there's another comment talking about Bo Horvat and his career shooting percentage, and how this season he's shooting well above that. Let's go over onto Hockey Reference and see just what exactly it is Bo Horvat is shooting at. I didn't have this open before I started recording this video. You're going to see me open this live on the spot. So, Bo Horvat in his, what is that, nine-year NHL career has an average of 13.8 shooting percentage. This season, he's at 22.7, which is a pretty big increase. If you wanted to go out there and average everything out, if you try to make this season average for Bo, you apply a regular shooting percentage to his numbers, he might only have, let's say, 14, 15 goals on the year, not the 22 that he has right now, which is currently fourth in the National Hockey League. And so, going back to Satir Shah's initial conversation on the radio, pretty much he was saying that even though Bo scores goals, Bo doesn't do anything else that really gives you a reason to clamor and say, hey, we need to keep this guy. If we trade this guy away, it's the end of the world. Who's to say that the Vancouver Canucks will gain a 
lot by keeping a guy like Bo around, especially after he gets the bag, should he actually resign in Vancouver, and let's say maybe goes out there and plays a little bit worse because he's having a career year right now. I would doubt that he goes out there and scores 60 goals this season and then next season and then the season after that, but talk to the comments either way all your thoughts. It's already been 10 minutes and I'm still tired. No, not really. I'm going to edit this video. I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to probably try to go to sleep. Who really knows? It's 6.10 a.m. right now on Monday, December 19th, because I took a few cuts recording this audio, but talk to the comments either way all your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this British Rolls 9 and bye.